Hey everyone! Today I want to talk a little bit about the Winglets, a set of novellas Tui wrote a while ago to explain some background characters and fill in some lore gaps. Not everyone knows about them, and it took a while for them to be printed since they were originally in ebook format, but they're really good additions to the series. Before we go any further, I just want to say that yes, this video will have spoilers for all four Winglets. If you haven't read them and you don't want spoilers, run away now. The first winglet is about Fierce Teeth in the Sandwing prison, and it details how she got from being arrested by Thorn to reappearing in the jungle attempting to assassinate Glory. The second one is about Deathbringer and his origins as an assassin. The third is about Six Claws and how Dune got crippled. And the fourth, which might be my favorite but is in pretty close competition with Deathbringer's winglet, is about how Arctic and Foe Slayer met. These stories are super cool and they add a lot to the series, so I just wanted to talk about my thoughts on each of them for a quick second. So the first one has always been really intriguing for me because when it came out originally, I didn't really have much context for what was going on. Obviously there was some pretty shady stuff going down, but it was so early on in the timeline that I had no idea what it was. And if we're being completely honest, it's been a while since I sat down and reread it, so I'm still not sure. Overall, I'm kind of neutral on it. It's probably not something that I'd probably read over and over again for enjoyment, but I certainly don't hate it and I do think it was a good addition to the series that filled in some of those gaps. The second one about Deathbringer and his mom Quickstrike is one of my favorite Wings of Fire stories. It gives us so much more insight into Nightwing culture on the volcanic island than Book 4 does, since it's written from the POV of a character who actually grew up there. It's a great origin for Deathbringer as well, and it shows us a little bit more about his motivation as a character. As if these points weren't enough, though, we also get some pre-Dragonette's glimpses at Pyria during the war. For a plot point that was such a massive part of the story, the War of Sandwing Succession is something that we don't actually know a lot about. How did the Queens come to their alliances? Have the lines ever shifted? What did battles look like? Did it redefine the boundaries of the kingdoms at all? A 20-year war is a huge thing, especially since dragons canonically age faster than humans, meaning that about two generations grew up in a war-torn continent. And despite this massive influence, we don't get to see a lot of the more practical side to this. So I think it's really awesome to see how the alliances were shifting and who the major players were. Plus, we got to see how the Nightwings were working to destabilize things when they could to keep the war going. Plus, <laughs> we got bonus King Gil content and a peek at how Morosir operated outside of his dealings with the Dragonettes of Destiny. For such a short story, Tui really packed a lot of interesting stuff in there, and I could spend a long time unpacking it all. So the second winglet is definitely firmly planted in my mind. It's a compelling, emotional story, but it doesn't rely solely on feelings to keep it interesting, since it's packed with lore and plot. The third story is interesting to me, but not overly much. Dune was never a super 3D character to me, so I had a hard time caring about him. Granted, this winglet was probably Tui's way of making him a little bit more three-dimensional, but the really interesting part of it for me was the window we got into Six Claw's early life, and perhaps more importantly, how the Sandwing Palace was before Oasis died. This is truly amazing to me because it's this great little tidbit of how things could have been along with backstory for a lot of major players like the Three Sisters, Smolder, and of course Six Claws himself. Additionally, we get a peek at how a major civil war like this didn't just affect the kingdom as a whole, but it got right down into tearing families apart, which is actually a really mature topic for any literature, and Tui did a really good job with it. So the third wing looks pretty awesome too. The little bonus nod we get at Thorn is really fun to have in there as well. And of course, everyone's favorite winglet, the fourth one, where one bouncy visiting Nightwing meets a young Icewing and they accidentally set a lot of things in motion. I love this winglet because we all know the story of Darkstalker and his actions, and we all know how his dad influenced a lot of that, maybe unknowingly, and how his parents' relationship affected his actions. So to go back and see how that started, to witness them being playful together, messing around and falling in love and being generally adorable, is both really eye-opening and really bittersweet, since even as you're reading the story, you know how things eventually end up. It's a really amazing addition to that plot. Plus, just like the other winglets, it shows us some of the inner mechanisms of a fairly secretive kingdom, and we get to see some more about ancient animus dragons and how they functioned. It gives background for a lot of the arc from books 6 through 10, and sets the stage for both Darkstalker Legends and for the Nightwing Icewing feud, which ends up being part of the reason for the Nightwing Exodus, the Dragonette Prophecy, and of course Darkstalker's Revenge Spree. So it's got some pretty far-reaching implications! Anyways, these are kind of my thoughts on the winglets. I've always really enjoyed reading short lore stories like these, and I'm really hoping that Tui writes some more in the future. She's done a fabulous job with the ones published so far. Which winglet is your favorite? Feel free to let me know in the comments. 
Thanks for watching everyone and I hope you'll have a wonderful day.